Come on, who's excited to be in church the very first day of 2023? Is anybody excited? I know I am. Come on. Hey, we can say whatever we want because we're not online, so they can't censor me. Come on, let's go. Who's excited for that? No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I would say hello online, but they ain't there. They ain't there. They can't hear me. The internet's out, but the power is on, and it's time to get refreshed. Who's excited? Who's excited to be here today? One more time. I am fired fired up. Absolutely so excited. My name is Elliot. My wife Tiffany and I have the great privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church. Give it up for yourselves. Give it up for yourselves. There's like three people that are like, yeah, we are Lifeline. Yeah, it's so cool. We have a mission here at the church. You can say it with me if you know it. It's to be a Lifeline by leading people and becoming lifelong followers of Jesus. That's our mission. That's our that's our reason for waking up early, going to bed late, and staying excited all throughout the day. That's, that's it. That's our mission right there. And you can follow along with all of the message notes with uh, maybe they gave you a bulletin. And if they did not, you can still do it. You can get on this bad boy right here, and you can download the YouVersion Bible app. It's a little brown Bible app, probably the most popular one in the entire world. And you can tap the events tab, and you can find Lifeline Church inside of that app, the YouVersion Bible app. And there's notes in there. You can follow along with the scriptures. And it's cool. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I think it's cool. It's a really great job our team has it done. Come on, let's give it up for the dream team showing up real early today. Man, we are all showed up. This is what happened. We all showed up and we were like, is the building still up? Like, we don't even know. We don't know if the building's still up. These are the, everyone here are the survivors of the great storm of 2020. The great storm. We will rebuild. We will rebuild. Um, but we lost our power uh, last night pretty late. Probably you guys did too. No matter where you live, almost everyone lost their power. But I'm, I'm so glad that God's power is never ending. Amen, everybody? God's power. You were waiting. I was about to, I was going to use it somehow. And I couldn't wait. In the first five minutes, I had to use it right then and there. So we're starting a new series today. Uh, we did not want to take today off because I just felt like somebody, somebody really needed to start their year off putting God first. I, I felt that in the, in the core of my being, and so we wanted to lean into this very first day of the year. Uh, I know a lot of people stayed up late and celebrated and rung in the new year, and that's fine. That's great, but there's some of us here that are like, hey, I, I need to get, put God first in my life. 2023, it needs to go down right here and right now. So we're starting a new series called Refresh, a new series called Refresh, where we're helping people walk into this new year. How many think God can do something great in your life this year? Has anybody got faith for that to believe that God can do something absolutely great? Well, we got a theme verse here to, to start off this, this series, and it, it goes a little something like this. There's three steps in it, and it's like a, it's a life first for a lot of people, and it goes something like this. You probably heard it. Proverbs 3. It goes like this, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, not a little bit, with all your heart. Not a little bit of your heart, not just like a portion, like I'll give you this part of my heart, Lord, but this other part over here, not yours. No, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. And it says this, do not depend on your own understanding. So all you type A, chill. All right, type A person. I'm, that's me too. That's me too. You type A personalities, you got to just bring it down. Bring it down a notch, all right? Don't depend on your own understanding because God has this. God has understanding that you don't have. And if you are that kind of way, just like I am, you've got to back off a little bit and let God do his thing. And then it says, seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Amen, everybody? Come on. Elbow somebody next to you and say it to them. It's time to refresh. Come on, tell your neighbor, it's time to refresh. Now tell the neighbor that you ignored, it's time to refresh. It's time to refresh. You're like, I got to yell across the room around here. Come on, it's going to be all right. It's time to refresh. So let's get this going. Who's grateful for Wi-Fi? Who's grateful for Wi-Fi? Come on, let's clap our hands for Wi-Fi. Yeah. yeah. You hear that, Lord? We need some up in here. We don't have any, but it's all right. I, I absolutely need my Wi-Fi. I'm a millennial, so like you understand. You understand what that is. Like I barely made it into the millennial category right there. I'm an I'm a elder millennial. That's right, elder millennial. But still, I'm still in there. I still belong there. And what I love when, when um, people who are in their 20s, I'm not in my 20s anymore. You probably were like, no way. No way, Pastor. You... There's no way. I, do. I don't believe it. That's why I had to trim my beard down way low so there's not as much white in it so you guys could shower that praise on I me. Mean, no, when people in their 20s come to my house, I absolutely love it. The very first thing out of their, their mouth is, guess what it is? What's your password? Password. Need the password. Hey, good to see you, too. That, that's awesome. Okay, but the password is the very, very first thing. It's like they just got done crawling through the Mojave Desert, and they're just parched. <laughs> that password. 
password, I need the password. They just need that internet password so stinking bad. Some of you are laughing because you have experienced this. Some of you are laughing because you're like, I just did that. I just did that just now. I walked into this church, so what's the password? Don't mind. Then we like just walk straight out. No internet? I'm out of here. Out of here. Come on. Internet is, is a really, really important thing. But So I thought, like just because of that experience that I've had a couple times, I thought it might be funny to, uh, to change my Wi-Fi password. To change it to something that, you know, when I'm communicating it to them, I could, uh, you know, maybe have a little fun at their expense. So I thought about changing my Wi-Fi password to um, I don't know it exclamation point. You ever thought about doing this? So when someone comes into your house, they don't even say hello. They're like, what's your Wi-Fi password? You can say, I don't know it. You just like sh- exclaim it because it's got the exclamation point right there. Or how about this one? How about this one? You could try to change your, your Wi-Fi password to uh, you tell me. You tell me. So when they ask you for your Wi-Fi, you tell me, you tell me. And you're not lying. You're not lying. You're just, you know, having a little bit of fun. I came up with a, a, one more. Uh, how about changing it to this? None your business. None your business. And you can spell it in any kind of way you want so they can't ever figure it out. Like N-U-N, your business. N-U-N, your business. Um, how about mind your own? Mind your own. Again, you can like change that spelling if you need to. This is my favorite one. Last one, I promise. Last one, I thought about changing it to give me a hug instead. <laughs> so they come in asking for the Wi-Fi back, give me a hug instead. Oh, it's good to see you too. No password for you. Or it, it actually is, give me a hug instead. Well, you know, there's nothing worse. There's nothing worse than no internet connection. Well, well, hang on a second, hang on. There, there is one thing worse than no internet connection. Can anyone tell me what that is? A slow internet connection. Amen, somebody? Man, I'd rather have no internet at all than have an internet that's, that's teasing me, that's just toying with me. It's just giving me that little upside-down triangle of joy, and I got nothing. I got absolutely nothing. It's just absolutely terrible. Like, we do things, we do things like we, we, we got no internet here, and you hold up your phone like this to the sky. Has anyone ever done this? You don't have to raise your hand. I see you. I see what you're doing. You don't have any signal here, so you're going to move that sucker two feet up here. Yeah. Why? Because it's closer to the satellite, right? It's closer to the, a whole two feet closer. To the, but we'll do crazy things to get our connection going, won't we? We'll do crazy things, man. I'll, I'll go anywhere I need to go. I'll hold that phone up a little bit just to get that, just to get that connection, man. When we open that new page and, and nothing. Nothing comes out. You, you open up your, your computer, your laptop. It's my laptop right here, and I open it up. I got the new page right there, and it's just blank. Oh, it's nothing just more frustrating than that. And, I, and when you see that page, when you see that empty page right there, and, and you know you, you're supposed to have a connection here, what's, what's the button you push to try and make it cycle back on again? And anybody know the name of that button? It's the refresh button. Come on, somebody. Yeah, I've been working my way towards this. I've been holding out as long as I can. It's the refresh button. And you hit that button and it starts to spin and nothing happens. What do you do? You hit it again and you hit it again and you hit it again. And you just keep hitting that refresh button until something happens, hoping every click that you click will bring change into your life. But without the proper connection, you'll never get the refreshment that you're seeking. Without the proper connection. You will never get the refreshment that you are seeking. Hang in there with me. I'm getting there. Hang in there with me. I'm almost there. Creators on the internet, creators create content so that they, they, they create it based on the fact that you're supposed to have connection. They create content for us to see based on the understanding that you would be connected to be able to experience that content, content in such a way. Well, guess what? Your creator has created you to experience this life with a proper connection to him. And without a proper connection to him, you will not experience this life in the way that you were always intended to. The Bible talks about it like this in John 10.10. This is not just the Bible. This is Jesus himself saying, the thief's purpose is to steal, is to kill, and to destroy. But listen to what Jesus says to us. He says, my purpose. Ooh, some will say, my purpose Jesus has a purpose. He came to earth with a purpose to do this, to give them rich and satisfying life. Who's he talking about? He's talking about you and he's talking about me. Some people don't like to preach like this and and when they hear it, they have trouble receiving it because it sounds too good to be true. But let me just tell you, Jesus has a purpose and his purpose is to give us a rich and satisfying life. And you know what that comes from? A connection to him. 
A connection to him leads to that rich and satisfying life. Who's grateful in this place today that God has a purpose for you and it's to give you a rich and satisfying life? It, it, that is his purpose. Sometimes we think things will just get better on their own, though. You ever like just sit back and just wait? You know, uh, you know, life will get better. Life will be okay. I just, if I just sit and wait, because it's God's purpose to give me a rich, satisfying life. So I'm just going to sit here, wait, do nothing, and things will just get better on their own. But no matter how bad you want that new page to open, that new season to open, that new series of events to open up for you, without a proper connection, you will be stuck. That's how this is designed to work, with the proper connection to God we can get the refreshment that we've always, always wanted. And year after year, without the proper connection, things will just continue to repeat, repeat, same problems, same struggles, same hardship. And I know I'm speaking to some of you right now because you are experiencing that. That is why you decided to wake up on January 1st and come to a church service is because you're desperate, is because you're hungry, is because you want God to do something new in your life. Because you're tired of the same old, same old. You're tired of these old problems, these old habits, these old hangups, these old situations from holding you back any longer. You are seeking refreshment. If that's you today, could you give God some praise in the house? Because God wants to do it for you. He really does. But it comes with connection. A slow connection, a connection that's not, that's not the way it's designed to be. That When we're not connected to God the way that we're designed to be, a slow connection can leave you feeling frustrated. You can take these down as, as notes if you like. A slow connection can leave you frust, str- frustrated. Have you ever felt like angry with your situation? Just so fed up, frustrated. Uh, it feels like you're just not getting the results you want and that leads you to feeling and being stuck. You see yourself as just being stuck in the same rut that you're in. The, it, whatever happened in the past, you know, it just who cares anymore. It, everything's repetitive, mundane, seems meaningless. And now you're talking like Solomon in Ecclesiastes. Meaningless, meaningless. Everything's meaningless. Life is meaningless. I feel so stuck. And that leaves you feeling hopeless. This next one is a hopeless. And this is where it starts to get dangerous in our lives. When, we, start, when, when we, we hang in there so long and we're fighting for that connection but not, not getting it, not getting the refreshment that we need so much, that's when we start to feel hopeless. Hopeless, wishing things would change and hope starts to fall by the wayside because we've hoped for so long and not seen the results that we wanna get. And, that's, and that leads us to feeling like giving up, giving up. And this is the most destructive, most destructive place that we could be and if that's you today, I just want to encourage you to just pause and, and lean in to this message today. If you're feeling that way, God has more for you. He's not done for you. Because if you're on your computer, for example, you're on your computer, you're hitting refresh over and over. You're only going to hit that button so many times before you hover over to a different button, the X button, and say, you know what? I'm done. I'm done chasing God. I'm done trying to pursue this way of life. I'm done trying to, to follow him and do this. But don't give up on God in 2023. If you're still searching for that refreshment, you're still searching for that connection, do not give up on God. I would encourage you. He is just about to break through in your life. If you will lean into him, he will break through in your life. He will. Do not give up. Don't let that be the story of 2023, the the year that you did not pursue God with everything that you have. There is still purpose. There is still calling. There is still life waiting for you if you do not give up. Amen, everybody? Don't give up. Don't give up. And refreshment is based on your connection. So let me say that another way, uh, just kind of reverse that. Without connection, there's no refreshing. Without connection, there is no refreshing. We, we all want refreshment. We all want to be refreshed. We all want to experience that um, fresh sense of new life, new season, new whatever. But without God, it's never going to happen. <laughs> sorry. You're like, hey, that's kind of, well, Sorry. All right, this is January 1st. I'm gonna preach it to you real. Without God, it ain't never gonna happen. Sign language, okay? It's never gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Mm. So what kind of connection do you have? Jesus talks about this connection in a different way, but I just wanna let you know, I'm talking about the same principle that Jesus has talked about since the very beginning. Watch this in John 15. Jesus says this. He says, remain in me and I will remain in you. In other words, stay connected to me. Stay connected to me. For a branch cannot produce fruit if it is severed or disconnected 
from the vine and you cannot be fruitful unless you remain or stay connected in me. He says, yes, I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit for apart from me, disconnected from me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. We need Jesus first and foremost in our lives. Jesus is the vine and everyone say, I'm a branch. Now show me your best branch. Go ahead. Show me your best. Show me your best. I'm a tree. I'm a tree. This is my best branch. You like how I, I incorporated the lower half? That's, see, I practiced that. I practiced that. And I had to work on my balance and everything else. If you cut a branch, what's, what, what's, what happens to it? It, die, it starts dying right away. In fact, it's already dead. Like, you might be able to bring it back to life if you get it back on there really fast, tape it on there. They call it uh, grafting. There is something about that. But once you cut it off, it starts to die right away. A branch that gets cut off starts to die right away. And obviously, it cannot produce anything good or any fruit is the way that the Bible talks about it. A lot of guys like to do this on, uh, in, around the time of February, mid-February. They, like they like to cut some things like a, a little flower. Cut a flower off of that vine and give it to a girl. What you're doing is giving her death. Come on now. Don't do that. Don't give her death. All right? Give her some chocolate. All right? At least that leads to like life or, you know, just give her something, maybe cash. I don't know. Like I didn't get too many amens on that. How about cash? All right? Well, it's the thought that counts. You'd be like, I thought about giving you cash, honey. Well, all right, never mind. That's all bad advice. Don't take any of that. I'm sorry. <laughs> look, 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 look. This is what I'm trying to, this is what I'm trying to tell you is, is when we march out without God, when we try to strike out on our own, disconnected from God, like a branch without a tree, just like, hey, I'm, I got this. I got my branch, branchiness happening. This is all good. When we try to march out without God, it's deadly. It's not just ineffective. It's deadly. It kills us. Spiritual death on the inside, which leads to physical death on the outside. We can't do it. Detached from him, there is no chance at refreshment. Listen to how Isaiah says it out of Isaiah 43. He says, forget all that. It's nothing compared to what I'm going to do, for I'm about to do something new. See, he's asking a question. See, I've already begun. Do you not see it? I will make a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in the dry wasteland. He's asking a question here. He's saying, can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see what I'm trying to say? Can you see it? And without a proper connection, the answer is no. I can't see it. Isaiah, I cannot deal with this. I cannot see what you're trying to help me see. We can't see any of that without God. I can't see my purpose. I can't see my healing. I can't see the new path. I can't see good relationships in my life. Without a proper connection, I can't see any of that. We need a proper connection in order to see what God wants us to see. There's good news, though. There's good news. But with the right connection, you get the right refreshment. Now, that's, important. that's an important caveat, the right connection. Sometimes we get lied to about the kind of connection we have. I, I had a fresh, uh, a fresh lesson in this very recently. Um, here at the church, we've got, like, routers that are sending a signal over here. And I don't understand. I'm not super techie, but I know when my phone's working, or not. Okay, so I know if the internet's working on my phone, and I know when it's not, but we've got all kinds of, like, routers that are sending signal left and right, and we've got, for the sound booth, we've got, like, and for the soundboard, has its own Wi-Fi, but it doesn't produce any internet. It just helps you connect, so I can, like, move the sliders. It's very fancy technical. I know. We've got it for audio. We've got it for visual. It's, it's all right there, so I could walk in, and this happens to me quite frequently. So that's when I, when I come into the church, I turn my Wi-Fi off because when I walk in here, I can get that little upside down triangle and be like trying to look on the internet and it's going nowhere. It is crazy frustrating. I'm like, I see, I got three bars. I got the full three, one, two, three, little upside down. It's going like there. Why isn't it working? Here's what I learned. It's one thing to have a connection and it's another thing to be connected to the right source for a download because you could be connected but you can be connected to the wrong things and it gives you a false sense of security to say oh I'm connected yeah I got friends oh yeah I got this group over here or I've got this little something right here something that makes me feel good it's one thing to have a connection it's another thing to have a right connection to be connected to God some people in church are dealing with that They think, well, because I'm here, all I have to do is show up, right? 
Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we go. It's going to be one of those days, isn't it, where I start getting all up in meddling in your business. I'm so sorry about that in advance. But they think because I'm here, everything's fine. I'm here. I'm doing it, right? I'm connected. I mean, who you, you, ain't, you ain't talking to me because I'm here, so I'm connected, right? But if you're really connected to God, letting him into your heart and mind, because without that, you're going to miss out, like truly letting him in, saying, all right, God, you are the Lord of my life. And I'm not just going to show up and, and have this false sense of connection. I'm going to let God all the way into my life. And I'm going let to him have, let him have dominion in my heart and in my mind. And when I open up the Bible, when I open up God's word, I'm going to do what it says. And I'm going to live my life based on what he says I should do, not based on what I feel like I should do. And I'm going to lean into him and I'm going to do what he says. I'm going to follow his way. That's what it means to have a proper connection to God. Showing up, and, and hey, I'm, I'm happy that you show up. We're all happy that you show up. We love you. We, we love it when you come. We love loving on you. But we want what's best for you too. And what's best for you is to have that right connection with God, to be truly connected, not just, not just on your Instagram being like, hey, check out my Devo spot right here. Like, not just showing the world that you're doing it. Not just trying to prove to yourself that you're doing it. But actually letting him into your heart. Letting him transform you from the inside out. And renew your thinking. Renew your mind. Renew your soul. And leaning in him during those hard times. During those rough times. And letting him minister to you instead of trying to do things on your own. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. You can be in church and have the icon of being connected. That's what it's like. You got the icon, but you're not really connected. You got the look, you got the little symbol, but it's not, it's not really happening. You have the appearance of being connected, but you're missing out on the real refreshment. You're missing out on the real refreshment. 2023, first message, first day of the new year. 2023, first, first message is this, move closer. Move closer to God. Take whatever steps you have to take to get closer to him because that's where life is found. It's where life is found. Sometimes we pray and we pray and we're waiting and we're waiting, but God could be waiting on a connection from you. Ooh, never thought about that, but check this out. Watch, I got, I got scripture for this and it's gonna help you. I, I pray it does. James writes it like this. James 4, 8 says, come close to God and he will come close to you. Well, hold on right there. How come I got to do all the work? Well, I thought, well, how come I'm the one that has to go out? No, he, you didn't do it first. He took the first step. He did all the work. He sent his son to die on a cross for your sin. He's the one that stepped out first, but he, he's a gentleman and he waits. He waits for you to respond to him. See, God is not going to impose himself on you and be like, Oh, I'm not gonna wait for them to make the right decision. I'm, I'm just gonna like change their mind and move it all around. No, he, he wants you to come to him because that's the way I was taught about it and that's, I like that language is he is a gentleman. He took the first step. He sent his son to die on a cross for your, for your sins but he waits for you to make that decision to come close to him and he will come close to you. Yeah. It's like it's an open invitation. He just stands there like this or some, some other scriptures say he stands at the door and knocks. You've heard these perhaps. But I'm, I'm telling you, move close to God. He'll come close to you. And you'll get the refreshment that you've been looking for so desperately. And it, the scripture goes on to say this. Gotta love this part. It says, wash your hands, you sinners. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wash your hands, you sinners. Who are you calling a sinner? Well, I, I didn't call you a sinner. It's James. My bad. It's James right here. I'm just reading what he said. I would never... I would never call you that. Purify your hearts for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. You know, geez, pastor, I thought I was doing you a favor coming to church on the first day of the year. And you hear you ain't calling me a sinner. I'm not calling you that. That was just not me. But he is trying to tell us something. That if there's anything standing in the way between you and your connection with God, it's time to repent from that. It's time to turn from that. It's time to let that go and let that sin go. Say, wash your hands, man. If there's something on your hands you know shouldn't be there, let it go. Get it out of there, man, because it's compromising your connection with him. We try to grab at the things that we want, and we sometimes forget it's about the process. We think about things, like, and, and I do this. We, I think we all do this. We, we go after the things that we're desperate for. Refreshment, for example. 
I want refreshment. I want refreshment. So I'm going to just run back and forth and, and look for it and beg for it and pray for it and, and do everything I can to get refreshment. We go after that refreshment, strung out, stressed out, fighting for that. But what we, have we been fighting for the right thing? Because, look, we've been focused on what we want instead of doing what's right, which leads to what we want. Look, I'm telling you, is don't chase after the refreshment. Chase after the connection. Because if you chase after your connection with God, refreshment will come. If you chase after the refreshment, then you're just going to end up doing it yourself. You're going to end up trying to do things yourself, trying to micromanage your own life and, and move, position things and get the different job or the raise or the different whatever it is because you're chasing the refreshment. What I'm telling you is don't chase the refreshment, chase the connection. Chase the connection with the one who supplies everything good in your life. Are you hearing me today? Chase the connection with God and the refreshment will come. What if this year was all about Jesus? What if 2023 was all about Jesus and we just blocked out everything else? Everything, I'm not going to focus on advancement over here or advancement over there or trying to get my own way or trying to figure things out on my own. I'm going to do this one thing. I'm going to focus on God and I'm going to lean into him I'm, because I'm not, I'm not hungry and going after the refreshment. I'm going after the connection because you learned on this very first day of 2023, it's the connection that leads to the refreshment, not the other way around. That's what we want. We want the refreshment to, oh, once I feel good, once I get the things I want, once my relationship is restored, once my promotion comes through, once the raise comes through, once the circumstances change, oh, then my connection, oh, it's going to be a lot better. No, 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 no. Focus on the connection with God. Focus on your connection with God and refreshment will come maybe even in ways you didn't anticipate. Almost always in ways you didn't anticipate. Come on, anybody who's been through that, say amen to me. Come on, come on. It's true, isn't it? It's true that sometimes God works a way that you didn't ever see coming. And he works it out even better than you could have thought or imagined. But it takes a little faith. It takes stepping out and saying, all right, God, I just trust you. I trust you first. I trust you foremost. And I'm not going to try and fix this on my own. I'm just going to lean into God. And that's a, that's a word for somebody today. Actually, um, not in my notes because it just happened this morning. Um, our, our power went out, obviously. Obviously, when I, I live in Woodbridge, and it went out around uh, 9.30 at night, um, last night. And we're sitting there watching reruns of Shark Tank, just, you know, living our life, you know, just doing our thing. All right? Tiffany and I like to talk about what shows we're currently watching, just in case you guys are wondering. I wonder if these guys watch TV. Oh, yeah, we do. We've never watched Shark Tank, and we're blowing through it right now. Really doing. I feel like an entrepreneur right now. So we're watching it. Power goes out, and we're looking around. And, and I'm so – whenever there's wind, you got to understand where I'm, where I'm at right now. Whenever there's wind, I get super stressed out, anxious. Why? Because I got like a 75-foot tree in my front yard. And it doesn't matter which way the wind's blowing, it's taking out somebody's house. And I, 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 I'm, I'm laying there in bed because the power's out. You're, it's pitch dark. You know, nothing you can do. You are sunk right there. I'm in bed. Some of you guys know. I'm in bed, and the wind is howling, and I'm sitting there with my eyes wide open going, please don't fall on the house. Please, tree, don't fall on the house. I'm just, I'm dying on the inside. I think I lost a year off my life last night sitting in bed for 15 minutes or an hour and a half. I don't know how long I was up there because my clock wasn't working, all right? So I'm out there, and, and this morning I wake up, power's still out. I woke up at about five this morning, and the power was still out. So I get up, I'm, I'm doing my thing, and, you know, I got a little power brick charging my phone. I'm like, I wonder how I'm going to, you know, my, my laptop wasn't charged. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm all messed up, man. I don't know how I'm going to preach today. I don't know what's going to happen. I have to go to the church to get myself ready and blow dry my hair. I don't know what's going to happen. And so I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go through my process. And my process is every morning I like to get up, get my little Eskimo hat on, because I get cold easy, all right? Take it easy. And so I got my little Eskimo hat on and I got my my little, you know, my pajamas, whatever, and I and I go for a walk and I pray. I don't know, it's simple. Maybe it's just simplistic, but I just the first thing I like to do when I wake up is I I get up and I, I start walking down the street. And you ever like walk down the street in the middle of the night when all the power's out? It's bizarre. So right over here, like three houses down, power's on. 
I'm so jealous. I'm looking like the street lights are on, everything's good, and I'm walking, and I, my, my route is where the power's out. I'm walking towards the fire station, and I'm going down, and it's pitch dark, and it's actually like really beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I, can't, I don't know how to describe it. I've, I never see my environment that way. And it was just, it was gorgeous to me. And I'm, I'm walking down the street and I'm, I'm enjoying it. Like there's a lot of stress. There's a lot going on. There's, uh, I'm, I had to play drums this morning. It's not something I normally do. There's a wedding right after church today. I didn't know I was performing. So I'm gonna do that. And it's just absolutely crazy. You're all invited to it, by the way. You're invited to a wedding. It's, if you wanna like start your year off like really crazy, just come to this wedding we're gonna have. It's gonna be fun. I'm dead serious. We're having a wedding after church. It's like an hour after church. You could go. And I'm, th- I'm thinking about all this, and I'm stressed out. And I'm going, and I'm walking down the street, and the power's out, and I, I just start, it starts to wash off me. I don't know what, I can't describe it. I'm minding my own business. I'm walking down the street, and, and those of you who live in Woodbridge know where I'm going with this. Because if you wake up early, and, and there I am, it's like 5.30 by then, and I'm walking down the street, and all the power comes on. Boo. All the Christmas lights, boo. All the street lights, boo. And it was really strange. Like I'm walking down the road and I just, I had a peace. Even though I didn't know what I was gonna do. I didn't know where I was gonna go. I was going through a lot of stress. You know, like the whole, the whole week has been crazy for me. We're out of town. We just got back into town. We had to drive like 45 miles down the freeway because it's like storming and stress and anxiety. And, and that, in that moment, I was, I was at peace even though it was dark. And as I was going through my process, as I was just staying committed to God in it, all, everything comes back on. And I don't know if this was just for me, but God knows I'm a preacher, and so I'm about to stand up in front of all you and talk to you, so God must have known. I don't know if you knew. I don't know if this is a word or if this is like prophetic or if this is anything special. Maybe it's just for one of you. Maybe it was just for me and you get to hear about it. Either way, I felt really strongly that that God was communicating to me. Maybe it's for you, but especially it was definitely for me. You, could, you can have it too if you want. That if you will just be faithful, that if you will just walk the path, if you will just do the simple thing that you know you're supposed to do, God will make it work out. God will make things work out. And I saw it, and it was beautiful. All the power was out, and I was walking by, and as soon as I got peace about where I was at in life, all the power came back on and I turned right around and went home because I had to like, you know, turn off all the lights so like the kids are gonna wake up early and all the lights were on. So I was like just stressed out about it. And this is, the, this is a scripture that just came, came to my mind about this is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest, also known as he refreshes my soul. It's like he wrote this just for this series right now. He refreshes my soul. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. This is who he is. This is who God is. We can count on him. He's always there for us. If we will just be faithful to him and walk the path that we were designed to walk, he will show up just just at the right time for you. Amen, somebody? Come on, he's good. He's faithful. If we would just believe in him, we can trust him. He will show up at just the right time. We got so many pursuits. I know you, you guys are just like me. I'm a normal person. I'm just an average guy. I know you got goals. I know you have pursuits. I know that you you have so many ideas. But let me just show you this. Let me just give you an image in your mind. Have you ever met someone with like a hundred tabs open in their internet browser? (laughs) If that's you, don't say anything. You got like a hundred tabs open. It's like you got one for every single thought, every single rabbit trail. You opened a new tab for it. Come on, you know who you are. You crazy. You crazy. (laughs) Hundred browsers, man, you are productive, and I'm so proud of that. But um, let me just see. Raise your hand if that's you. If you got lots of tabs open in your browser, come on, let me see you more than I thought. Sorry, sorry, I didn't mean to. Didn't mean to get you. <laughs> but did you know, the more tabs that you have open, the slower your connection is. I'm sorry. The more, the more tabs you have open, the slower your connection is. James, remember that he said you come close to God and he comes close to you. You have that ability. But the other thing that happens in that same verse is, is letting in things and having tabs open in our lives that don't belong there. 
that are slowing and compromising our connection to God. There are tabs that might be open in your life that are compromising the connection that you have with God. And that, when that happens, and you, you might know what this feels like, that when there's things in your life, there are t- tabs open in your life or there's situations or things in your own life that you know shouldn't be there, it makes you not wanna pray. It makes you not wanna read your Bible. It makes you not even want to show up to church because those things in your life, they hold you, they hold you back and they slow your connection with God and they actually hold us back. Some of that junk that's stuck in our lives makes us want to hide from God. It happened to the very first human beings, Adam and Eve. They sinned and what did they do? They hid from God and he calls out to them, where are you? Where are you? Do you think God didn't know where they were? Or was he saying, do you know where you are? You've hidden from me. Do you know what you're doing? You're hiding yourself from me. It's like rhetorical. Jesus asked many, many rhetorical questions. And this is the first, I believe, just personally, rhetorical question. Where are you? Where are you? Where did you go? No. Can you hear God's heart breaking? I just am thinking about that moment. It's hard to just, hard to imagine what that must have looked like in the Garden of Eden with Adam, but like with God going, no. Where are you? Where did you go? Why did, no, no, don't go. Don't hide from me. Come to me. Oh, I just, I don't know. I just see God's heart breaking in that. Adam and Eve, they sinned and they, God was asking where they were and he was asking, do you know where you are? And if this is you, there's, a, there's an answer. There's an answer of what we can do, how we can respond how we can sure up our relationship with God. And it's in Acts 3, verse 19. It says this, repent. You've been hiding. You've been running. You've been kind of giving God one of these right here. No more. No more of that. Instead of Heisman from God, you could turn to, repent means to turn and turn and face him. Even with the pain, even with the hurt, even with the shame, you can turn to him and say, no, Lord, I'm not gonna run from you in this. I'm not gonna run from you in my pain. I'm not gonna run from you in my shame. In 2023, it's gonna be all about you and I'm gonna chase you. He wipes away sin because he says, repent and turn to God so your sins can be wiped out. He wipes away sins, they're gone. As far as he's concerned, they don't exist anymore. They're as far from the east is to the west and I don't know if you knew this, but you can fly north on the globe, and you could keep on going north until you start going south again. But if you start flying west, it never becomes east. He didn't say as far as from the north is from the south. He said as far as the east is from the west, I have removed your sins from me. So it's infinitely far. He wipes out our sins from us. And it's like he says, if you call right now, this happens too. Acts, Acts 3, 19, repent, turn to God, that your sins may be wiped out. That times of refreshing may come from the Lord. Hallelujah, praise God. He's gonna bring us refreshment if we repent from our old life, our old style, our old way of the pseudo connection to the real thing, to the real thing where we're gonna chase after him no matter what we're going through. We're gonna put him first. And does anybody need or want that in 2023? Does anybody want or need that? Let me just tell you what it looks like. We got those tabs open. Try and picture it with me. Try and picture it with me. You got, you got all your tabs open and you got a hundred of them. You got a hundred of them. And at the very, very bottom is Jesus. You know, he gets hidden. He gets hidden when all these other tabs are open, when we got all these other pursuits, but you got some other tabs open and one of them is called despair. And it's time to close that tab of despair and say, no, that is not me anymore. I'm not gonna live this way. And it's time to reach up and touch the X button on that window of addiction. 2023 is gonna be the year where the addiction does not happen in your life anymore. You're gonna run from that and run to God. And there's a tab called offense. You're gonna hit X on that tab of offense and say, I'm not gonna live offended anymore. And anyone who's offended me, I'm gonna forgive them and choose to pursue God instead. There's a tab of hopelessness and say, nope, I'm gonna close that one too. There's no more hopelessness in my life. I'm gonna choose to pursue God instead of lingering and having these open tabs in my life. And guess what? Every time you close a tab, what happens to the ones that are left? They get bigger, don't they? 
You know what it looks like? Until the only thing that's left, the only thing that's left is Jesus in your life, where he is first and foremost, and he gets the only spotlight in your life. No more hopelessness, no more despair, no more addiction, just Jesus. Somebody say amen. Amen. It is time to focus on nothing but Jesus. In 2023, let it be said of you, let it be said of you, Lifeline Church, that you are pursuing Jesus with your whole heart starting on the very first day of this year and you never look back. And it's not about, it's not about the calendar. It's not about what day it is, not about what time it is. It's just this is the day that the Lord has made for me to chase him. And when we do that, when we have only Jesus tab open, that's a weird thing just rolling out of my mouth. When we have the only the Jesus tab open, listen to this scripture, Matthew 6, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. If, if you seek Jesus and let him be the only tab open in your life, live righteously. He will give you everything that you need. Jesus, we want you at the center today. We want you at the center of our lives today. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes with me? I think this is a great time to pray. Father, we want you in the center of our lives. We want to make you the focal point. We want to make you the center. And we're going to forsake and leave behind all the things that are holding us back. Because with heads down and eyes closed, as we're praying, I want you to imagine this, that there's a spiritual world. And there's a war going on. Spiritually, all around you, there's a war going on between the life you're currently living and the life you could be living. We all have vision. God has given every single one of us vision and you have vision for your life too. You see righteousness, you see goodness, you see good relationships, you see healthy things. I wanna tell you that's from the Lord. That's that's what the Lord wants to do in your life. But there's a disconnect between where you're at right now and where you could be in him. And the only difference between the life you could be living and the life you're living right now is full and total submission to him to say, Jesus, you're my Lord, and I'm putting you first. So if that's you today, and if you'd like to make that decision to say, you know what, I'm going all in, I'm going all in. If that's you today, would you just lift your hand up to the sky and say, I'm going all in, I'm going all in for Jesus. I see your hands, hands all over this place right now. I'm not even gonna count them off. That, that is wonderful. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. Let's all pray this prayer together. If, there, if you're ready to make a prayer that says Jesus is your Lord, then just repeat this after me. Say, Father God, Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for my sin. I put you at the center of my life, leaving behind the things of this world. I submit to you and make you my Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make me new. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, can we celebrate everyone who made that decision today? Let's go.